<laughs> FYI, Keith. Chaitanya is here, so she's the one that asked for it. Oh, we're gone. <laughs> Scott, Come on, please. You want to borrow a laptop? Could you share the slides? If Linux ends up working better than Mac, we win. I just wonder if it's, <laughs> if it's because you're not plugged into power. Right, so right arrow should go forward. Yep, right okay. Arrow okay, okay. No okay, okay, uh, uh, okay. Hopefully, we get, hopefully this stays up long enough. Okay, just quick overview. What are we, what are we doing here? So let's say you have an app application. It, it really only wants 64 bytes of your, uh, okay, we're just gonna do it without slides, guys, sorry. I'll show you later. Okay, so we have an application. It has, it, it re really wants to read 64 bytes of data. It's on the it's on the hard drive or your your storage, and uh, it it doesn't want any more than that. This is an example. Um, what it has to do instead of actually reading that directly, it has to allocate some kind of a bounce buffer, transfer the data into the bounce buffer, and then copy the data that it actually wants, and then discard the bounce buffer. This adds latency, especially when you're reading something so small. You probably have a very latency latency sensitive application. You're also using up wire bandwidth that could better be used elsewhere. So uh, uh, to address this, uh, storage protocols have um, added support for things like this in VME. Uh, they call this bit buckets. Basically, it's a way you, it's the way the driver can add a scatter gather element to its descriptor that says, I don't want this data, do not transfer it to me, I have no memory for you to put it in. So, um, so that's, so the protocol do support this. Uh, I don't know of any others besides NVMe that support something like that, but there might be. Um, um, so to support this in Linux, um, um, this would only work through O direct, obviously, um, and um, uh, the descriptors that we get in from user space are already in byte-sized alignments and byte-sized uh, transfer links. So user space can already describe this. The block layer just won't let you do it. It'll give you an error instead. Um, because the structure that the drivers get are, are BIOS, and they describe everything in terms of sector T, uh, which is a 512 byte. So, uh, uh, I prototyped some stuff with a little bit of help from Jens, and the um, um, proposal that, we, that I came up with is that we're going to add uh, special, special pages uh, that fill in those gaps. So you can, you can request your 64 bytes right in the middle of a sector, and we'll append uh, BVEX on either side of it with the special page in it. And then pass that down to the low-level driver, and it will see that this is a special page. It will create bit bucket descriptors for you, and then you can directly transfer your 64 bytes or whatever from the, from the drive directly into your user space application. No, no bounce buffering, no copying, and it should be nice and fast. Um, there's a few, few other issues that came along with this. Um, if you do a full sector read without bit buckets, it takes only one scatter gather element, so we don't need to allocate anything else because it fits inside the command. Um, when you use um, bit buckets, you need to have an extra descriptor on either side of it, so now you hit, went from one to three. You can't fit that in the command, so you have to allocate as a DMA pool. The DMA pool is actually uh, slower than we'd like it to be, and um, allocating and freeing out of that actually negates any of the performance benefits that we would have gotten. Those extra scatter gather elements, are, are you talking about the special pages you put in the bio, or is that at the protocol? Uh, this is in the protocol descriptor. So this is so since we're allocating from the DMA pool, this is for a device-specific descriptor. So we allocate out of that. Put yeah, that's, that's because you s the command is still block-based, and the SGLs are uh, memory-based, and so you have to describe all of the bytes of the block and where they have to go. So you have to have the one SGL entry that says, well, I want these 16 bytes. Well, then you've got the other, what is it, 498 or whatever that, you know, if you've got a 512-byte sector, you've got to describe those other bytes too. So you say, throw those away, keep these, and throw those away. Yeah, the SGLs still have to describe the whole sector, just where to put all the bytes and throw some away and keep some. Yep. Thanks, Fred. Um, so I, I did uh, I did recently very send, send a proposal to the DMA pool to make it faster. It's about twice as fast with, with some of the uh, patches that I sent. They're still under review. Um, I do need to send a V2 after some feedback from, from Willie, so I'm going to probably do that this week. And I also have the RFC proposal for the bit buckets that I need to send out because it didn't hit the list when I sent it out last week for some reason, so I'll, I'll fix that. A um, couple of other issues. Um, this doesn't work with IOU rings pre-registered buffers. Uh, the reason why is those are already BVEX and you can't append pages once you create the, IO, uh, the, the bio from them. So we can't append the special pages to both sides of it. Um, and uh, Leah? 
Ian, oh, uh, don't, I'm not sure. The, can you hear me? The, there are inline VVEX that you can use without allocating anything on, on, on BIOS, right? So, you oh yeah, the inline VVEX. So there's four of them, I think, up to four. I uh, can't remember. But uh, uh, the should, there should be enough for, for describing the subsector read. Yes, there is. I think what Keith is saying, so for the register buffered for IOU ring, those are organized as VVEX. And part of this, how they're passed down, right, you don't modify them, you just attach them directly. So you oh. can't... You, yeah, so you init the bio from the BVEC. Yeah, you just attach you that BVEC to the bio. Once you do that, it's you're fixed. You can't append pages on to the front or the back. You're gone. But, so the point is, what you're bringing up, right, each bio will have, well, I guess actually for, I mean, it'll have some inline VEX. So you could just copy your, the BVEC over for a fixed buffer, right, and add your pad, right? So it'll either be one or two, right? You pad on either side, right, or just on one side, depending on, on the size. When you have the bio, you, you do have four BVEX, or is it more, I forget, I think it's four, available to do so. The ones that are at the end of the bio. Yeah. So you could make it work with the registered buffers or the fixed buffers. Okay. Maybe for V2, we'll look into that, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess the only other question I have is, that should this work, well, it only works through raw block ODirect. Should it work through file system ODirect? I think probably shouldn't, but maybe it could. There's well, no reason. That, that would be fun to get that to work with buffered I.O. Yeah. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, it just doesn't stack, so maybe uh, it should, but uh, probably not. I don't know. Well, the DM is going to be fun with that. The too. DM would be, a, would be really fun, yeah. Uh, but uh, at least this initial proposal doesn't touch it. So, well, um, I mean, you... I would assume that we need to flag the queue as supporting bit buckets or whatever. We uh, want absolutely, yeah. Like. Otherwise, you don't know if they're going to so even DMs check for the special not, page. Not so. going to work, right? Because it, it doesn't have that that feature. I don't see a lot of use case for this for file system, to be honest, unless the block sizes got really big. Because part of the reason is, I mean, the main object here is saving bus bandwidth, right? If you need 64 bytes, don't transfer 512, and now you've saved, you know, 87 and a half percent of the bus bandwidth. But there's also latency concerns, and at least for now, um, O-Direct on file system still kind of sucks compared to raw block devices. Fair enough. Yep, that is that is the downside. Instead of using PRP, now you're using scatter lists. But at least on the, the stuff that we tested on, the controller is suitably e efficient at STL. So having three element STL versus PRP is not, has not been a concern. The overhead is actually on the, s on the software side. Right, PCI only. I suppose it could be implemented on fabrics, but could it's... Uh, I mean, it makes sense there too. It, yeah, you can see it's, it's all Maybe about saving your link so. bandwidth, right? So if it matters on PCI, it could matter on TCP too. So. Forgive me, because I don't know. Is this, this is both reads and writes? So the protocol does not support writes. I'm not aware of one that does. Okay. So uh, uh, Fred might know a little better if there is something coming down the pipeline on this for rights, and if we could, that would actually be really cool to add as well. well I don't think you would gain much from it because it would be a read modifier right for the device anyway. So. Not, not, not necessarily all of them. There are some that uh, have ver very, very, like ones that are persistent memory backs, they don't care. They can okay. do subsector rights without a problem. There's no active proposals doing right bit buckets. Okay. Well, that answers that. So reads only, I guess, for <laughs> as far as we know. I'm sorry the slides didn't work. Some of those graphics were really, really cool, but <laughs> <laughs> take my word for it. <laughs> so uh, maybe I have a question for Jens, though, uh, for you too. So um, what about extending the block layer to support more uh, uh, block sizes besides what we do today from 512 to 4K, which is essentially well, all that it wait, does? Wait, before we go down that route, how is this different from the same proposal we had for diff and dicks, which wanted 520 byte sectors that were eventually solved with dual scatter lists? So why couldn't we reuse the same machinery for this? 
this, I think the main thing is it's, it's much simpler, this stuff, right? It's really just, if you look at the code changes that Keith did send out, well, I guess they didn't hit the list. Um, but it, it, it's pretty trivial just to pad the SGL list. I don't think, outside of that, outside of conceptually having, sharing something, I don't think there's a lot of overlap in it. The diff dicks is, I mean, it, it, it adds a bunch of stuff in, <laughs> in a bunch of different places. The bio included too. And I don't believe even, say at Facebook, I don't think we even turn it on because we don't, we don't use it. Okay, but conceptually, it's still two scattergather lists, one of which essentially adds decorators to the other, which is just what you do. Yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing with that. There's a lot of code associated with diff dicks that this one doesn't really have, right? It's really just, this is just the driver setting up that STL because it's all in, in NVMe. I mean, I think maybe if you had support for other devices, you know, than NVMe, that it makes sense to do it generically somehow. Um, but it doesn't seem that, that like there is. So I don't think necessarily it makes sense to turn it into like a subsystem feature just for NVMe. Not with the amount of code it is. It's literally like tens of lines of stuff, right? It's not, it's not massive. Regarding what Vivian said, I think this um, approach could be very interesting for zone storage if you can make the block size as large as a zone size for zone storage. Yeah. Well, if you have a zone that is one sector, that's yeah, an interesting <laughs> zone storage, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no, uh, I was actually asking about the supporting different block sizes because if you think, for example, an SMR drive where um, you can read by LBAs, but you have to write per uh, physical sector size, which is not necessarily the same. Uh, and uh, you think of large sector ECC or that kind of stuff in that they are trying to work on SGDs, and it's not a stretch to imagine that uh, we we may have to support 64k uh, sector sizes, where you can read anywhere within that sector without having to read the entire sector, but you have to write in units of 64K, for example. So it would be the same, not just the same scale, uh, but so eventually that may get generalized maybe. Yeah, no, I agree. That's totally the same issue, right? Just different scale, but exact same thing. I would imagine for the large block size, if you have hardware support for just reading it, right, you wouldn't need to do it's the more padding yeah, like and an all that LBA stuff. PBA right? type thing, yeah. You would just need be able to ask for a subset of that sector. But uh, I, I'm thinking more the the so lower than than five twelve bytes. So the, the sector T addressing uh, would be the main issue to solve. So the the bio uh, offset being a sector T, while the length is actually bytes. Uh, offset is bytes too. Oh, well, you, I'm talking about the memory offset. You're talking about the sector T in the bio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe unifying to sector T being something different or going to bytes or something might simplify things going forward. Yeah, I mean, we, we already have a little bit of mix up of that stuff when you have things that are not sector driven IO, like pass through commands and whatnot, um, which is why you know most of it is in bytes, like the size of the bio, right, is in bytes, but the offset is. So yeah, maybe. Okay. Partial sectors, partial session, it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so no more questions? Okay. Thanks everyone. <laughs> all right, we have a 30 minute break, well, 45 minutes now, uh, so we'll be back at 3.30 for NVMe passing.